uh, online here watching Justin Smith. Nice. You you ready? You ready for it? Jim, yeah. Jim Sliver is with us from Dodge Country in Wisconsin. Hey, Jim. All right. Let's get into this stuff. So this is all the colors, the updates, everything to do with the new 2022 Skeeter Boats. Um, so Matt's not seen this presentation other than a quick glance through. So we've had a chance to kind of go over it a little bit, but we'll give you the overview and then we'll let Matt talk about the features and the way it's going to increase the performance or the fishability for anglers. Colors and stuff, you know, that's all going to be subject to a person's opinion um, of what, which one they like the best. So anyway, same as last year, FXR 20 and 21 Apexes, six colors. Um, the, the FXR 2021 Limiteds, eight color packages. Of course, you've got the select. So those of you that want to pick your colors, will have the ability to do that. It's honestly their highest priced boat. You get to select every option. You get to select every color. Uh, that's the way that the pro anglers do theirs. People like Matt and Mark and Wes and Scott Canterbury, they all pick their colors on a select. ZXR 21s and 20s, there's eight colors. Uh, the ZX 25s, or 150s, 200s and 225s, there's eight color packages. Of course, we have the the walleye boats and all of those, but you know we don't sell those unless it's a custom order, so we're not going to go over those right now. Um, this is one that'll enhance Matt's ability to be able to work for one of his other sponsors, which the boats this year will come with complete Johnson Outdoors packages. Uh, Minn Kota Raptors on both of them, including the ZXRs, are going to have two uh, Minn Kota Raptors on there. Everything will be linked which will give you the functionality of your, um, uh, you, can, you, can run your, you can run your Raptors off your graphs. It's, it's the Hummingbird uh, One Boat Network. One Boat Network, that's Humber, exactly what it is. One Boat Network. Um, so, and it also, by going packaged, it helped keep the increases down on some of these boats a little bit, uh, a little bit lower than they, they probably would have had. And of course, with COVID, you guys know that supply has been impacted. Um, everything from vinyls to motors to everything like that but skeeter's working on keeping that uh better okay um i'm really fired up about this change right here this was oh, such a oh. great fish this one yes yes all right so a lot of times we have to install something we either would have to build our own wiring harnesses or we would have to install which is actually a really good product the sea clear uh the sea clear power harnesses skeeters kind of put something like that in eight gauge wire separate circuit that goes direct to the battery still going to be jumpered you can see that it goes all the way up to the bow to work for um, multiple graphs uh, anyway eight eight gauge wire all the way through so that's kind of a neat little added feature um, independent leads all the way up to the dash and the bow um, it's uh, looks like it's eight gauge to ten gauge and then has uh, it's fuse paneled for or fused for each one individually on the hot side so you can run four graphs on here, each yeah. fuse, you know, each with its own fuse block, five amp fuses. Um, that's that's huge. I know with Tech Tuesday, almost every week we're getting questions with everybody putting more and more electronics on. Sure. Um, that's definitely become a, a big. That's that's a great big upgrade issue. right there. We needed that. And you can splice too. So if you had to you could still so say you're hot lead and you wanted to run the new uh, mega live on them you can splice into that there's enough power in that eight gauge wire that it will run all of those different things so if you needed to splice to be able to put more on those two that's fine um, but it, this kind of deal even if you have an older older skeeter um, older boat and you want to add graphs, it's it's a good thing to add one of those wiring harnesses sure. because it helps to clear up the power going to it Less spikes when you start the engine, and it actually helps clean up the image they're, on your graphs. They're a great addition to your boat, so and not having now, you know, this this will eliminate something else in the rigging department for, for us to have to do. Yes, and the boat's going to come set up, so it's that's a big bonus. Yep, a little a little less time helps on the rigging costs too. Uh, the new Yamaha, Matt, tell them a little bit about what's going on with the new SHO. You know, the new Yamaha is basically the same great engine we've always had, but we made some additional uh, some changes to it. First thing you're gonna notice is a new shape cowling, kind of a little more aerodynamic, a little cooler. But the big, the, the total benefits of it is we went to a 40% more charging capacity on the 
the alternator on. Now we've got a 70 amp alternator, and with all the electronics and all the power that we're, we're demanding now out of our for our boats, we needed a bigger charger system. So Yamaha stepped up on that. We got a new total tilt feature, and then uh, what is the total tilt feature? Not up to date on that yet. Dan. I think I think honestly, it's when you take it out of the out of the out of the water, you can hit one button and it right. raises the motor all the way yeah, up. I'm, I think I'm, is what I'm it. behind like everybody else, but I'll, I'll get up to speed on it. Yep. Well, and then uh, what is all different different shape oh, different shaft, sizes. shaft lengths we still offer the, the 250 uh still gonna come in a 20 and a 25 inch shaft the 200 is gonna come in a 20 and 25 inch shaft which allows for pontoon boats pontoon boats with 225 is available only in a 20 inch shaft so and i i suppose it's, it's worth the question i know somebody's going to ask it so you know are the are the new motors going to come out on the initial 2022s. Yes, I asked sir. that question yesterday, and Steve okay. and our rep did say yes. The, yes. New, the new, the new motor stock. So you can skip that because the color is striping. It's the same as last year. So skip, skip that one. All right. Well, no all changes right. to the striping layout on the boats. Yeah, you'll you'll get to see more of that. Um, okay. So to match the SHO, they've enhanced the console uh, look and some of the badgings on the consoles, as well as the steering wheel to kind of give it a cohesive look through the whole boat. Um, new windshield, new steering wheel, uh, new grab handles. We call those the oh crap handles. Yep. For when people like you are driving. I drive <laughs> or slower. or, or uh, Clay Dyer, you know. <laughs> you gotta just hold on, because they're, they're goers. Um, the new badging, new gauges. Uh, you can see in the one gauge, you're gonna have your trim, your fuel, your battery power, and it looks like your water pressure all in one gauge cluster. Uh, RPM with a digital uh, speedometer inside of it. That's a new, so you'll have two gauges instead of a whole group of gauges in there. Um, and then a new billet aluminum uh, and uh, looks like increased mounting plate angle to give you a little bit more room behind the steering wheel it looks like on that one. Um, okay, and and again, the passenger console, if you want one of those, that is not removable. Yes, on, it's on fixed. The so we, like, we get that question for those those guys that are looking for dual consoles. Everybody, everybody's asking that question. So, all right. Okay, on to the model changes in the Apex edition. Six standard color packages with that Tri-Tech paint, two solid colors, and four striped. The, the new emblems, uh, C-deck flooring, the, the EVA cockpit flooring, that's going to be standard in the FXR series, um, and three and four color upholstery for seating. The big difference is you're going to a 15-inch helix on the dash and a 12 on the bow. Obviously, the wiring and the, uh, the other changes are the two Minn Kota Raptors. Those are the active imaging Raptors, and then new style vision wheels um and they're 18 inch wheels with the goodyear eagle sport tires yeah, on them for everybody that hadn't used the mink coat raptor yet they're incredibly quiet they're incredibly strong they got bottom seeking feature so they always keep keep the boat anchored and uh that i've got to use them all year long I'm really really impressed with with the raptor what, what's the advantage to going to a 15 inch uh helix on the on the dash well for guys that don't want to run multiple graphs it just gives you a bigger bigger view of everything there allows you, you to split the view a little, little bit split views whatever you know me I'm, I'm gonna run multiple graphs just just because i tear a lot of stuff up that's a, not certainly that's that's the only reason why i run multiple graphs because yeah, you have a backup right i i got a backup for a backup i mean you go 50 miles from the ramp and it's rough and you don't slow down and you know le electronics break they don't like to be bammed and slammed and you know we're out in some pretty harsh environment so that's the that was that's the main purpose for running multiple graphs for me. If it wasn't for that, I mean, a 15 inch graph is perfect. So but yeah, it, uh, and, and the helix is about bulletproof, so it's it's a great feature to add to the boat this year. So that's the changes to the models. Okay, let's go to the color packages. Um, some of these are going to take a little getting used to. For those of you that are used to the the color, that's you know it's an army green, and I honestly I think that boat's going to sell. Um, that army green's a pretty cool looking color. It's it, it's going to be one of those things where 
people are like, oh my gosh, or eh, not for me. Um, but I think that color is going to sell quite a bit. That that new matte finish has been really, really popular, and I think that's a that's a that's a really unique, interesting try on a boat color. I like it. So you got a light blue, um, and then that's kind of a standard Skeeter, uh, you know, white, blacks, reds with uh, some red flake in there. I think that's a cool one. I saw a walkthrough video from the Classic of that, that particular boat right yes. there. It was at the Classic. Yes. And it was an awesome looking boat. It is. Um, that one's got that fine crystalline Polytech finish, Tritech finish on it, uh, and, and it just a really, really good looking boat. Um, and I, I think it's worth uh, worth mentioning, at least for whenever you're watching this video, if you're not with us live. Uh, so these are renderings, yes. getting photos of all these actual boats and stuff like that. I'm sure it's going to take a little while for Skeeter to get all their photo shoots done and, and get a bunch of that stuff out there. Because so. officially, none of them are built yet. This is the artist rendering of what it's so, going to look like. So this is early on. So just before everybody goes scouring all over the internet. T typically 22... Uh, New Year models will come by after the dealer meeting. Correct. And that's sometime mid to end of July. So if, if they have it, it might be virtual. It may be virtual this year. So it, it, it'll probably be the end of July, 1st August, when we start seeing uh, 22 models actually roll into the dealership. All right. All right. Slide two on the Apex. Look at that. An advanced angler green color. <laughs> Makes me super happy. Um, just, it's like, guys, you built it for me. Thank you very, very much. Anyway, just kidding. Lime green with some blacks in there. Again, it's going to be the Tri-Tech finish with the real fine crystalline flake in it. Uh, beautiful finish. This one's going to be more of a remote, I mean a, a maroon color. Um, uh, actually, the bottom one's the maroon. Uh, and then you got a, 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 another good, this is kind of mimic of the old Skeeter team colors that yeah, they used. Black, to, red, and white. You guys used to have to order black, red, and whites. Yeah, so the, the maroon burgundy boat I'll be for. Yeah, cause that's just because you're an Alabama fan. Well, of course. Yeah. Well, crimson, though. Yeah, which yeah. it never ceases to amaze me why you don't just go all crimson for you because yeah. <laughs> anyway all right you ready for for pricing because i know i know folks are going to ask okay all right nap so. pricing on the fxr 20 apex is 84 395 uh and the 21 apex is 85 895 so uh, a little bit of an increase there on the apex they don't make as many of those so Everything's a little bit more of an increase on there, but still, it's a Skeeter. It's still great value. And that is the the NAP price. So. Nationally advertised price. And uh, we'll just have to wait and see how that all works throughout the year with rebates or any, any kind of stuff. We got Daniel McAfee, too many red-colored boats, War Eagle. Yeah, War Eagle. That's what I'm talking about. And they, they make that uh, FXR Select for you, man. Come on down here. I'm sure we can put you together on War Eagle boat. Yeah, we could actually. <laughs> Dude, that'd be awesome. See, and I don't, and, I, and technically, I don't mind the Crimson because I've got a Crimson boat. I, I mean, my, my school's Crimson too. Boomer Sooner. So we, we can't even offer for champions. Oh, look at you. <laughs> all right, Here's all right. Moving on, moving on. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> okay, FXR Limited. Eight color packages in the limiteds. Um, again, the EVA cockpit flooring, you know, standard known as as C deck flooring. There's been a couple guys test that this year. I know Canterbury yeah, got Canterbury his. Canterbury tested it, and Zaldane did. That, yeah, and, and I'll, I'll tell you, it. Uh, I think it's a great upgrade just because it's it's incredibly hard, no matter what bass boat it is, if you got carpet in the floor, it's just hard to get air down into that floor area. To where to dry. Yes. And it's always been an issue with carpet. So uh, the EVA cockpit floor is going to be a great addition. It'll keep that, you know, keep that floor dried out. So. And it's easier to clean. Yeah. It's easier to clean. Hose it out a little bit. Um, 12 MSI Helix on the dash and a 12 on the bow. And last year, what was it? A 12 and a 9 or 12 and a 10? I think they upgraded the bow, that, the bow one on that one. Eight gauge, eight gauge direct wiring. Um, again, the active answering uh, to Minkota Raptors, and then another upgrade uh, from last year. I, I honestly like these wheels better than the all black ones that were on this yeah, year. I like a little bit of silver on there. I think that looks that's really, really good. Well, you know, also the we, we've been really pre, you know, package rigging with Minkota Ultrax for a while now. That you know, we're saying that 
that comes with the, the Mega DI yes. controller motor. So we've got a built-in transducer there. So which is great because now you can you've got Mega MDI on the bottom already rigged, which eliminates some of that interference coming outside the shaft. Right. But then it also allows for a little bit better rigging with your uh, 360 or your uh, live new Mega Live yeah, too. I got, I got them all three up there right now. It's, kind of it's, it's pretty sharp. Okay, let's go to the limited color packages again. Another Skeeter team color. I think they stole some of your colors on number two there. Yeah, I think they did. So uh, I, I think my, my color scheme is actually in a ZXR package. No, is it <laughs> spot on? It. <laughs> so that's the uh, that's the. Uh, it's gonna, it looks like a charcoal color with uh, blue and white. Right. Again, you got the uh, crimson tide color over here on the number three, or the boomer sooner color. We can go there. There's your tuxedo right there. That's one of the Skeeter's been with a little flare. It's got some silver on the side there this year, it looks like. Um, and then you got your gel color packages. Number five is white and blue. I, You know, I I like the way that looks when you got just the one stripe color on the bottom and a stripe on the console. I think that looks really sharp. Uh, this one's unique too, just white with gray, white with red. And then again, man, another advanced angler green boat. Look at that. They just love me, don't they? Yeah, they do. Anyway. Alright, and pricing on the FXRs. We are looking at the limiteds. The nap on the 20 is $76,995. Nap on the 21 is $78,495. So not quite as big an increase there on as you did with the uh, Apexes. Okay, FXR select. I, you know, I don't really think we need to go into that so much because everything is selected there. Uh, you'll have the same features with the Ultrex and the uh, and the the graphs. Although on the you can upgrade the the dash graph to a 15, which is a nice upgrade. Um, and then it looks like from the picture there on the right hand side, the FXR that looks like a tackle storage tray to me. Um, I, don't I think, see that I think it, that's the new tackle storage system in the box. Which they made it a little more billet. To yeah. allow for a little more uh, weight reduction in there, because those things were pretty heavy that's last year. Yeah, that's, that's pretty sharp looking right there. Mm -hmm. I haven't saw it. Again, the same wheels as the FXR, and it'll come with the same steering wheel upgrades too. All right, and and we don't. I mean, we don't typically do a lot of selects for customers every now and again. I think but, we've done uh, three or four this year. Yeah, and uh, there's not really uh, pricing information put on there because well, it, it's fairly customizable, right? Yeah, it's it'll start at a base price, and then it, it depends on every. There's no nap yeah, pricing. Yeah, on there's no nap words. pricing. So um, it'll deal with MSRP, you know. Um, but again, no no real pricing because it's all very specific to the customer. Yep. But there's a base price plus whatever options you add, so there's no yep. nap on that one. All right. Okay, the ZXR. Um, biggest change here, along with the. Uh, the Minn Kota Raptors, they went to a different wheel on there, all, all black and silver, aluminum wheels, 14 inch on that. Um, and then, uh, do I see? No, it's still going to be carpeted, it looks like. Um, but the biggest deal there is that it's it's, it went to the FXR deck layout. And they added, you know, the FXR foam seats that you have uh, in the center. Right. On with the, the cup lid. holder. Yeah, yeah, and the cooler lid is going right. to be a, so there's less chance of your seat pad blowing out. Right. It's more integrated. Right. You've been using that now for a couple of years. Seems like a pretty cool little feature. Um, yes, the FXR has been standard on it since the beginning. It's kind of a padded cooler lid, mm -hmm. but it's, it's it's formed and made that way. So it's not a snap-on pad, so you don't have any problems. And, and believe it or not, it wears incredible because guys getting up down going to the back deck all day and it's and they don't show any wear. So it's it's a really good cooler. And lid. it kind of helps to insulate the cooler a little bit it too. It does. You know, that's something else about that FXR. It it, it holds the keep ice all day. We got a great cooler in the boat. Um, but those are the two big changes there. Helix 12 and a Helix 9 on the bow. That's the same as last year. Um, what they take away in the team style layout is that there's no net storage. And then you've got traditional 3700 size Plano slots in the tackle storage there. As opposed to the 3600, you, you'll only have one uh, day box in there. But uh, it's back to more of a standard bass boat instead of the coffin style lids it's going to be pretty nice uh there uh and all the other features that it's come with in the past but the 
the deck layout, eight gauge direct wiring, and the uh, the uh, was it was it the FXR yeah. they increased the uh, rod storage tubes in the roller motor? Or I think it's in everything. And everything. The FXR and ZXR. Both package. Yeah, look like we got an increase on our rod storage. Machines. Okay. All right. You ready for some colors on yep. the ZXRs? So a little different take on the the tuxedo color this year. A little darker. A uh, little bit of white. Less white, more black on the number one there. There you go. You got the. We're gonna try to mimic Matt, but not copy him in the number two <laughs> with the black and blue. That looks like a grand blue. That's gonna be a really good looking color. Standard Skeeter, black, white, and red there. Again, the Crimson Tide Boomer Sooner colors on the bottom. Number five is uh, Advanced Angler Green again. Oh my gosh, you guys are so, it's touching. Thank you. But anyway, I'm sure it was just for you, Dana. I know it is. Uh, and then number six is a kind of a negative uh, photo negative of the uh, number one uh, opposites there L looks really good. This one's going to sell a bunch. Number seven and number eight, those are both going to go. Uh, there seems to be, the, you know, actually they may have copied your son's boat there. <laughs> it kind of looks like Josh. It kind of looks like Josh. It's Darth Vader type stuff. Uh, so we'll call number seven the Stormtrooper. We'll call number eight Darth because, you know, you got the white with the black and then you got the. The, the gray with the black on that one. So yeah, number eight, that's a good looking. That's gonna be a good looking boat. It is. That's I a good looking boat. I jumped down there. It is. That's all right. <laughs> all right. Hold, hold on. Right. Hold on. We, we, we got the, the. Yeah, we gotta have map pricing. Save, save, these, save me from answering all these questions in the comments. There's your nap pricing on the. On oh, the there we go. Um, we are ZXR twenty is sixty three zero ninety five, and the ZXR twenty one is sixty five six ninety five. That's where we're going to be on that pricing on that racket. That's where we're at. All right. Um, okay. Pretty cool changes here. So the overall changes to every model, FXR, ZXR. So 8% larger on the mega tubes, um, which will add about two rods per tube um, to that one. So, you know, there's still it could still be modified if you really wanted to but this gives you a little bit more rod storage. They're gonna split the battery trays two and two so that it balances the weight just a little bit um, in your battery rigging. And then they moved the... Um, this is a heck of a nice change right here. The, the water separator filter back here in the back, it's been directly under the, the jack plate and in, in between the weight transfer system and that battery charger back there and they, they got it off to the side now it's a lot easier to service it. Saves a little bit of time on the service side of things. And then you can actually, actually select another fish seat in there as well on each of those. That's an option. Um, Sit down seat. Yes. yes. Old man seat. Yes. Black guy like, seat. Like, like I need. <laughs> I don't see that happening anytime soon. Okay, ZX series overall changes. Oh, the other thing on the ZXR is it's coming with two of the uh, Raptors, not not the one on yeah, the, a big on the starboard here. side. The ZXR package is coming with two poles instead of one. Yep, it's got the two Raptors on there. Um, okay, so let's go to the ZX models. Hold on, real quick. Yes. We had a question about the, no, oh, it's not going to show up very well, but we'll throw it up there. About the, didn't they glass the rod boxes in the ZXRs taking the carpet out? I believe they did last year, didn't they? Yeah. I, don't think, I think that's kind of standard. So it wasn't mentioned in the notes for changes. So I think that was something that they did last year, Corey. Um, yeah, I'm going to ZXR because it, it basically the ZXR is a similar construction to the FXR. So a lot of those actual structural features, I think they were going to do the same way, and that's why they did them last year. Yeah. Um, so I believe you're right on that, but that was a last year's change, not a change for this year. Um, there's for the guys that wants a ping or ping day. Yes. This, we still got it in the ZX245. Yes, there you go. Um, so eight new color packages. They changed everything. Uh, the rims are upgraded on the ZX series. Um, uh, well, not upgraded. It's a new wheel. Um, but you're looking at, again, the Team Advantage deck layout, the same one that's been in there on the uh, ZX225. ZX200 and ZX150 are going to be standard, but there's your options there. Um, 
Looks like ZX225, they are making that look like it's going to be their team focused mm -hmm. tournament boat. I mean, the, when you start adding a big, the, big upgrade oh, with the 8 gauge wiring harness and everything, we're going to have. Yes. That. Still has yeah, the, I the mean, four track. Well, it's got a four tracks 112 with the Ultrax MDA, MDI options. We'll probably end up ordering most of those with an MDI or with an oh, yeah, Ultrax because yeah. most people don't want to want that on that boat anyway. Right. And that's, yeah, I mean, and that's still a. I mean, that's still a 20-foot boat. I think, you know, sometimes they get lost when you're talking it's to heavy, customers it's just because it's got a 225 on the back. Yeah. They think it's a... It's a higher it's 19. A 19 1911, yeah. I think, is, yeah. the, is the length. So, And that boat's you know, a mover. That boat yeah, runs. Don't don't count that out, particularly if you're on a budget, um, you know, or a little bit tighter budget. Spend a little mm -hmm. bit more on electronics if you want to. And I all fish that. some mighty big waters with that boat over my career. I mean, that's that's what we ran. Yeah, that's that's Skeeter. That's the Skeeter boat. I yeah, mean, that's yeah. that's the one you guys ran for a lot of years. A lot of, a lot of years, and that's that's a fantastic boat to fish out of. Yep. Um, okay. Right. So colors. Ready for colors on the ZX. Now this is for the two twenty five, the two hundred, and the one fifties. Correct. Right. Um, so number one, that's your dark tuxedo. Um, again, a. A Matt Heron styled black and blue boat. Looks like his jig. That's his favorite. That's why he right. colors it that way. Right. The team boat, the black, red, and white. Uh, you got a Crimson Tide Boomer Sooner color, number four. Advanced Angler Green is number five. Um, that might be an interesting color pack is number seven. Yes, it is. Uh, photo negative of number one there, number six. Um, then you got the dark. And the, you got the, the Stormtrooper over here, and you got the uh, the Darth Vader boat, again, number eight. Those are all really, really good-looking color packages. Um, let's, let's put the nap up there. Nap is on the, let's see, ZX-150. Nap is going to be 38195 That comes with a 150 SHO on it. Um, the ZX-200, big jump, because that's a big, big upgrade with the motor and everything, 50895 and then the ZX225 is 57995. So um, that's what you're looking at there on that. I think that's and then let's uh, some of this stuff is just dealer fully yeah, we, installed we trolling few, motors. Yeah. Saves a little time. And then we get into the walleye packages there. But um, so uh, Matt. Yes. If you as a tournament fisherman say you're not fishing the Elite Series, but you wanted to go you're going to fish hardcore Toyota series kind of stuff. Yep. Um, what's your option? What would, what, which way would you run? Which model? And, and what's the advantage to these new changes? Well, I mean, it depends on your budget, number one. Sure. But, I mean, if a guy's got a tight budget, I mean, ZX-225 is going to accomplish everything that you could possibly want to do. You're still going to get good uh, speed out of the boat. You're going to get great performance as far as big water capabilities. That boat will handle big water. And it's coming set up with eight gauge wire and it's coming with, 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 with you know, everything. That you it's a tournament with. boat. It's a tournament boat. I mean, that's what we fished out of. I mean, 05, 06, 07, I was, I was running the CX225. Yeah. So, but. Uh, what year is this for you with Skeeter, Yamaha now? I've been with Skeeter since 05. I've been, I've been around. That's a lot of math to do in public. I know. It's probably close to 20 years. I mean, we're. I've been around for a lot of changes. Years. I've, I've been through, you know, the ZX series. But you know, gosh, it was funny back when I was, was when I was thing. fishing team stuff around here. I fished with a gentleman named Larry Beeman, and uh, we always, for whatever reason, we'd always wind up fishing out of his boat. So I, I fished multiple years out of a ZX uh, 200 or 202C. I fished out of an SX uh, 190 Bayou Special, all with Yamaha. So I, I've been Skeeter Yamaha before you were Skeeter Yamaha. Before I was Skeeter Yamaha. I mean, I. Probably from the mid nineties. Yeah. So I mean, it's skeeters in my blood, man. I mean, it's it's just a great boat. It uh, for every few years there, I run competitive stuff and they like to kill me. <laughs> so, I mean, it uh, they're they're great boats and the 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 FXR now is as far as ride and big water and all, it's just a Cadillac. It's definitely made a difference in the way guys walk after a tournament for sure to be able to have that. The dead rise and the and the the comfort of that ride for sure. It, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's kind of telling when I get marshals from day to day, and they've done you know that they that's kind of a telling story. A lot of it's you know who's driving the boat, of course, 
and how they want to go about it. But a lot of it's when you get these marshals day to day to day, and they, they come in all, in all these different brands. I, I've not had one crawl out of my boat yet that wasn't thoroughly blown away. So, so the other changes that you're seeing, uh, what's the most significant improvement that you see? Which it's hard to improve on, but you know, just the features that you've gotten. Is it the the Raptors? Is it the graph upsize? Is it what is it? Oh, I, I like the addition to the Raptors. You know, the, the, the dual Raptors. I like the addition. I'm a big. I'm really impressed with the, with the upgrade on the eight gauge wiring harness. Yeah. Because I feel like we, we really needed to do that. Uh, I like the increase in the rod tubes. Yes. Because uh, I was having to modify mine, but you can't go by me. I carry thirty to forty rods, so it, it just <laughs> it's ridiculous. They probably don't make a tube big enough. I don't know why they'll probably go to St. Lawrence River and still try to flip in ninety feet of water. Nah, I really, <laughs> I, I really got my rods the other day. I got a bunch of egg beaters. <laughs> I'm mean, here dragging something around. Going, dee, dee, dee. <laughs> well, so I, I do think it's it's probably worth mentioning that we're going to see a lot of similar stuff that we've we've seen since last year. Uh, everybody that's calling saying I want to see these boats in person and look at the colors. If you're waiting to see one of these boats sitting in a showroom, uh, you know, that's, that's going to be really, really difficult. Uh, it's funny, all the questions about last year's models, you know, me being the, the web guy, taking a lot of the photos of all these boats, I didn't take a lot of photos of last year's Skeeters because as soon as they rolled in on the truck, they were unloaded, put in the back and gotten rigged and taken you know, home. We're talking about a lot of stuff, the changes that are coming for this year. But some of the most important things to me, traveling all over the country and, and, and guys take for granted, but Skeeter just invested millions in, that trailer. in a trailer manufacturer. And I promise you, there's nobody in this industry has a better trailer under their boat right now than Skeeter. That trailer tows well. It's, it, it is an unbelievable, and it's, you know, it's just, when you tow one, you truly appreciate it. And, and when you put the, the thousands and thousands of miles on a boat that I do, I, I know what, what works and what don't work, what tears up, what doesn't tear up. And those things are bulletproof, man. I mean, they are. Unbelievable trailers. They're, they're balanced. They're, 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 before they come out of the factory, I think they get a full wheel alignment in, but everything's balanced. I mean, it's that's awesome. crazy. So yeah, yeah, we got to do a tour of that last year when we were down for Skeeter meet, uh, dealer meetings, and it's an impressive factory. I mean, they're welding them right there. There, there's there's nothing coming in that's not. They they make the fenders right there. Everything's made right everything's there. The wiring right there. harnesses are made there. I think the only thing they bring in are the wheels and the tires. That's it. I mean, everything's in house. So they're powder painted right there. It's pretty impressive. You know, we invest all this money in our boats, but what we tow them around on, we kind of forget about. And you need to think about that when you go purchase your next boat. Look, look, look at it because if you're going to keep this boat long term down the road, I mean, knock on wood, 2005, we've been using about the same hubs that I, I you know, and, and I, you know, 30 to 50,000 miles a year is what I put on one. I've not had a hub tear. Well, I know, I know, uh, I've got friends that, the biggest frustration they have in some of the boats they own are their, are their trailers. They spend more time underneath sure. their trailer than anything. So I can attest, it, it, it's not the big sexy thing to look at no, it's not it, the, uh, until you got a problem with uh, it. Yeah, until you're sitting on the side of the highway waiting on a rollback trying to figure out what you're going to do with that boat. Yeah, and, and I see it. I see it. I, mean, I pass them all the time. I mean, and it's, you feel sorry for folks when you see it. But, you know, look at that trailer when you, when you go to make the purchase. And all our trailers are built in-house. So... Everything's done right there. So look at that. And, uh, gosh, the little things you never think about. Think about the grade of carpet. I mean, don't don't seem like much, but two or three years down the road, when your boat's falling apart, and you know, the carpet's all frayed. Carpet's all frayed and looks like crap. I mean, it's everything. All our components. The vinyl on the seats. Everything. Everything we're using as far as components to build these boats is is, is the best of the best stuff. It's from high grade. You know. Great material. I'm, I'm waiting on when somebody puts Kevlar in a seat because, you know, people that put their tools or their zippers on their pants or, you know, whatever, and they sit and snag it. I'm waiting for that. Oh, Plus, it'll be lighter. Think yeah. about it. It'll be lighter than vinyl because it's Kevlar. I don't care. It's and you hard. can shoot the seat. It's hard. <laughs> I'm waiting for somebody to get some ducking to come out of the cooler because we just left the classic and it was about 127 degrees. 
I, I thought it was one hundred twenty-seven thousand. I don't know, but I just want I want some of that cool air coming out of my cooler to come up through the bottom of the seat. You want air, air conditioning <laughs> in your bass boat? Yeah, because huh? when you sit down in the seats, hey you man, trucks high. got it nowadays. You got AC seats, your cooling seats. Why not put them in the bass boat? Yes, yeah, that's, that's that's the next upgrade. We need some we need some kind of fancy. Are you cool listening, Skeeter? Skeeter? Are you listening, Skeeter? <laughs> Israel, when you see this video, invent it. Yes. There you go. There, there's a uh, we got Israel a around here. He'll he'll figure that one out. Because right. we could just take some tubing and kind of run it just as a funnel that comes up and then put one of those VT2 vents right under your cooler lid so that it just catches air and pushes it, right? Yeah. Here's uh, All right. So we got one question on the difference between the ZXR and the FXR now. Besides the CD. The you know, honestly, what we've been told is that there's a slight difference between the hulls on those boats. Slight there, there, difference. There is a difference in the hulls. Oh, I, I know there is, but they, they, it's, you know, it's, they're it's not going to tell us what it is. No, they're not going to tell us what it is, but it's a different hull. And that uh, the biggest thing that differs between the ZXR and the FXR is all the components inside the yes. boat. You know, the, the gauges that are in the FXR are all, you know, we, we have an analog and we have a digital. The, the, the ZXR does not come with analog, with, with the digital gauges. You know, it doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, the ZXR, I don't think it's available with a full padded front bag. It's it's just the fishing platform area, just, yeah, and then, half of it basically, not the, know, not the not the deck lids. The upholstery in the seats is a different grade of material. Fewer colors, fewer colors, different grade of material. Uh, I, thought, I don't know if the carpet may be the same weight. I'm not sure, but it, when you look at it, I mean, when you start adding up and you start looking at the wheels, the fenders, the tires, the metal fenders, yeah, yeah you, you start adding it all up, you're gonna start seeing why there's a difference there. But as far as the, the a little bit smaller electronics, yeah. Um, I don't think they come standard with an Atlas jack plate either. That's that's an increase. That's something you'd have to add. That comes with right. a that comes with a uh, um, manual jack plate. But when you start adding it up, you'll start seeing why there's a price difference there. But as far as the the, the basic functionality of the boat, the ZXR for the money is is, is, is just a fantastic uh, deal. Well, and that's I mean, I, you're talking about the add-ons and the changes in the prices. You know, something I see fairly common with customers. Somebody wants to come in and add a bunch of stuff, especially when you're going from like a ZX200 to a 225. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to add bigger graphs. I want to add 36 volt troll motor. By the time you add all that kind of stuff, your price is almost at the next boat that already comes with a lot of that right. stuff. So keep that in mind when you're you're looking at the different lines. And, of, and of some bikes. of you guys, it's not really the price thing. It might be space. You know, yeah. is yep. some of it. Yeah, absolutely. It, we understand that. Um, yeah, there's still ZXR. a lot of folks out there that, that, that can't put a 20 foot boat in their garage. Uh, Ultrex on the ZXR is not link. That's one of the differences. Yeah. Um, it's got the PC charger in it, where the FXR. FXR's got a PC charger. All, all our boats too. are coming with a 15 by 4, so it's still the same charger. Right. There's, uh, like you said, full front deck padding. There's not in the yeah, ZXR. The battery, the battery gauge indicators. Battery gauge indicators, one. Um, is, it, is the battery jump, cut off jumper switch on, on the ZXR? I'm not sure. I don't think it is. No, battery on off switch. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. have the jumper system it in it. It doesn't have the jumper system in the it. The FXR's got a jumper system that if you do kill your cranking battery, you can jump. Yeah, I was going to say, if you've ever been sitting there at 1 o'clock or one thirty and it's time to go to weigh in, and you sit down and you go to, you fished all day and you go to hit your ignition and it won't crank. <laughs> it's worth every dime for that jumper system. Uh, let's see. Here's a question. We got sort of a tech question here on uh, wiring in a Mega 360. Um, uh, Zach, what I'd tell you is uh, if it's a 21 FXR, I would get the C Clear wiring harness installed. No, he just, if he's, if he, if he's, he's just adding. Up. No, he just added the Mega 360. Th there's drops up there. Yeah, yeah, you'll have wires, but I'm saying if you want the ultimate performance of yeah, it, I would. It won't, it won't affect the 360. 360 just needs power. You just, right. just, just use your standard. So I guess back up gauge. to what you're saying, saying with the C Clear. Then the question is, did you replace your original wiring harness with a C-Clear harness to yeah. begin with? And then you're, now you're just adding on a 360. Yeah, I mean, but there are power more, drops in the yeah, bow. Yeah. The, more, the more electronics you're adding up there, I mean, that's why they're changing that's the why whole 8-gauge wire for the, the next year. So yeah, the, only, the only thing I would recommend, because I've done it, is, is go in there and ID. The, there's drops up there that you don't have to turn on the accessory switch mm -hmm. in, in the panel. Find those that's, that's live, that's got power on without the accessory switch, and that way you're, you're hardwired like you are with your electronics. Otherwise, 
you'll get up there and you go, why ain't it working? You forget that it's on that accessory for you. But what happened? Does that, does that, and, and I'm asking seriously because I don't use 360. Yeah. Does that draw power the whole time? 360? Yeah. Not if it's turned off. At your battery switch in the back compartment. Because if you've got it no, set to No, if you turn the death monitor off, it's off. Okay. It's off. Okay, got you. Well, so yeah. it goes to sleep with the graphs. But those are always great questions when we do the Tech Tuesdays. We Again, we, we but get they're a out of the water, that kind of they're stuff. Off. That's true. They do you know, when they're asleep. stowed, they're off. So, so but the, the bottom line is, is that the drop that's in there, it's going to be probably 12 gauge wire that's in there. Yeah, it's sufficient to run a 360. I wouldn't try to pull a graph off of it, but as far as just the power up the 360, yes. you're fine. Well, and then especially but there are other bo other things like the Mega Live. Does that actually have a it has a box to it? Correct. No. It just plugs just, into the just, graph. No, it just needs. It's got to have a power source. Because we we've got mine. We just put it on. We've got mine wired in on one of the drops of the boat. So I'm having no trouble. The, the the deal is though is that the more electronic features you add to the boat, the more overall power draw you're going to get, and you're going to start getting less power to it. That's where you want to add a, a, a wiring harness like a C clear power. I've got C clear power on my graphs. Yes, but basically a three sixty and a live are just an accessory. That you yes, need power understood. Because they're still funneling back through. The, the electron. So what you're seeing there, so you're not going to get any interference. You shouldn't get any interference just off a of power drop because they're going back through your electron. Granted that your graphs are wired correct. Right. As long as they're wired, yeah. Graphs have enough power, then you're fine. Right. Yeah. Um, you got a 2022 for sale yet? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's sold already, didn't you say? I know Chris goes. Chris goes over in Clark Sale area. Just they uh, I think Matt's is sold. Come see us. We'll get you taken care of. <laughs> I, I, I can't. I really can't say it enough. You you got to reserve boats. That's where we're at. Um, and, and Michael's serious, guys. It's, I mean, it's. We were surprised when we found out our final number of what we delivered this year as a as a marketing team and as a sales team. Uh, didn't never felt like we had the number of boats that we sold that we delivered to customers. They were gone before they got here. They were gone before they got here. Right. Over half of the boats that we had on order initially were already spoken for before they even hit the parking lot, before they even left Skeeter, to be honest with you. We're not going to get to a spot this year where we have 30 boats on the lot for you to go sit there and pick through colors. It's going to have to be, uh, I like that color the way that it looks, and we're going to have to go with it if you want to get one. You know, it's it's not, the, the biggest thing going on in the marine industry right now, I was talking to my boss was Yamaha at the Classic, and it's, it's the little things you would never dream of. You know, he told me that Yamaha has plenty of engines. We don't have an engine choice. There, there's engines sitting around at the factory everywhere. There's engines sitting around out in the ocean in yes, containers. In container ships. And, and the biggest thing that we're having trouble with right now is literally logistics as far as getting them off containers or you know out of containers, getting them shipped to the. He said just something as simple as an 18 wheel driver right now. Or, sure. or a dock worker to unload them is a nightmare. Yeah, I got a friend that's a rep for another company that lives out there, um, and he uh, he said that he went to the port of Long Beach okay. and took a picture to send to his boss, and he counted, and the, the freight liners to where he counted to where he could stop seeing the hull turns to where they all became one big blur. He counted 61, this is about a month and a half, two months ago. He counted 61 anchored out to the ocean, and they were still going. Sure. I mean, the port of entry, the port of entry right now, we're, we're, we got a global economy now. We're not, we're not an independent economy. We're global. And uh, well, We it, talked to Rick Pierce, it, and he said the other thing was, um, is that it, it, it may not even be that it's hard to get things here. As That may not even be the biggest roadblock. They're, they don't have enough longshoremen to take the containers and put them back on the freight ships to send them back empty so that, that we can get them. So they're trying to figure out how to package they don't, they everything don't, they without really containers. They don't have enough containers. And then if, it, if we don't have, you know, we're not working in this country. Our production is down significantly. So our exports, you know, when they take those containers out of this country, they won't take them by full. Right. So when they ship them back out, they won't. So basically those containers are sitting here waiting on product to go in them. So it's just a mess, well, and this 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 is not going to get any better this year. Yeah. Well, and one of the things that I, I like to harp on is is that we, and I think we've seen it from all of our manufacturers. I guess the best way to say it is we've gotten to know our reps a whole lot better. 
uh, because I mean we're literally talking to them daily, uh, every other day. They they're changing their processes to communicate with us uh, so that we can you know get better, clear information to customers. Um, and and it's I mean it's just the world we're in. So we're trying to do the absolute best we can. Uh, on, on all that kind of stuff. And I think all of our manufacturers are, are in the same boat. They've, they've done a really good job of communicating and yes. managing the expectations. We don't have companies now that are like, oh, it'll be there in a couple of weeks. And then months later, um, they're, they're, they're giving us some realistic timelines and we're trying to pass those on to, to you guys. So um, it's, it's well, definitely- If you not, want a new boat for next me. spring, not on an order. Or, no, yeah, <laughs> no, no kidding. You need to come in here and see Michael or Nano no. and order that boat. No. Katie, Melissa, Melissa, Jamie, everybody's got everybody's got a. We actually keep a folder to know what's available and what's not. Melissa and Katie and and Mary put it together. There's a folder to know what's coming and whether that one's spoken for or not. Everything is marked. So if you want to get your name in the list, let us know. Um, we're not. We're not trying to manipulate it. We're being honest with you is that everything is coming in and it's gone. Coming right. in and it's gone. Coming in and it's gone. Yeah, I mean, since this, since we've got in this position, I feel like a dirty, sleazy salesman every time I say that. But I, mean, I really, you got to talk to the salesperson. I know there have been one or two cases where somebody put a deposit in on a boat, but it got here and that deal fell through for whatever reason. And because somebody had been talking to, to one of our sales folks, they were able to jump into a boat three months earlier um, and uh, you know, cause they just called them up and said, Hey, it turns out I got one. That's the one you're looking for. Um, so keep that. That's really the best way to do it is not sitting on the internet, watching our, our inventory. We're trying to put that out there as best we can, but you've got to be talking to a salesperson because it's changing almost daily. So, well, all Chris, right. Chris Gold said he's going to give us a call. Chris, awesome. we'll put you in first in line if that's what you want to do. Anyway, I think we're good. I think I think we're good. Matt, thanks so much for coming in and, and talking, talking. Outside of the black and blue, what was your favorite color package? You know, I really liked that the Apex. It was kind of kind of like almost like an American flag, but the, the, the walk through I saw. Yeah, and I saw that boat at the classic. Yeah, yeah. I, I would yeah. like to have seen that boat. It's going to be this package, number three. Yeah, yeah number three. It, uh, it was sharp. There was, there was a couple of walkthrough videos. I'm not a guy that really likes white. I just thought that the grays and the blues, it was just, it was, it was a pretty boat. It was all matched up with a, with a Yamaha color, so it was, good. it was an awesome looking boat. But you know, boats, everybody's got their own taste in boats. I always want a dark colored boat. I just always have. And uh, I like something that's kind of like getting a little more shady bank somewhere. It don't, it don't, it don't jump out. So, well. That's why you have a purple wrap. And if if you've made it this far in, in the video, guys, <laughs> it's got a camel pattern. It is absolutely I, definitely comment uh, comment on the video on, on what your favorite color is. Um, that way, we know how many uh, of each to order. So, um, which I think we've already ordered a ton. Um, yeah, it's a crazy crazy time. So and always right. negotiating to order more. And <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for uh, hanging out with us. And uh, hopefully this gives you an idea of, of what's coming. Chris Gold says we like Georgia colors. Negative, Chris <laughs> Gold. No, no, no. All right. No, no, on no, that, no. before we get too crazy, we're out of here. See you guys. Boomer sooner.